Bonjour tout le monde. <coughs> Hi everybody. And my dog made me the same made the same thing he did last week. Exactly when I was getting ready to broadcast, he wanted to go outside. Okay, nice to see you all. I had a mishap though when I went and I got a little uh, salt and pepper shaker and uh, it was in a package you couldn't really see a lot inside but it said glass so I got it from the Dollar Tree you know the one dollar set of two and then uh, 10 minutes ago when I unpacked it to get it ready both of them were broken they were cracked so what I did real quick I just emptied one my pepper one so we are going to use this one so let me get this out of the way for the moment hi tina and uh what i am going to use first what i'm going to do first is to uh do the transparencies generally when you want to do uh to cover up um anything in fall colors all the fall colors are kind of strong well maybe not necessarily the yellow but definitely the red and the orange are very strong colors so you want to um, kind of subdue them a little bit and uh, you will go for some translucent for that purpose so I have here, and I'm going to run them through the pasta machine so I can give you an idea of um, the proportions of the mix that you need to use. So this is just plain old translucent. Then I have some uh, zinc yellow. And for some reason, my machine is on thin. You don't normally need a lot of clay to cover a salt or pepper shaker so that's why I not I didn't get a whole bunch of it but uh, again using a cutter right I'm going to get I'll probably have like two full parts of each Because also, uh, you kind of need to be able to see if there's something inside the salt and pepper shaker. So it's a good idea to have it slightly translucent, not just for purposes of subduing the color. Hi, Anastasia. Of course, the yellow will need less than the white because it's uh, than the orange because it's not as strong as the orange is. So, generally speaking, oh, I'm trying to see the chat too. You will go with one part of translucent for two parts of yellow but with the orange and with the red if you want to add red to it you will go in equal parts translucent and the color because they are very very strong colors and nothing wrong will happen if you put so much, they are so strong that they will color the translucent perfectly. Did you find the uh, low grain sandpaper? Because I was wondering if I should get some uh, salt here too, because I said in the necessary materials to get uh, some coarse salt if you don't find the sandpaper that's very low grade hi nancy
Okay, so because we need to do a Skinner blend of this, I'm going to place them in such a way to facilitate the job. You know my shortcuts for the Skinner blends. If you feel more comfortable with doing it the normal way, just uh, do it as you're feeling comfortable to do it. But see how I place the four almost like in a checkerboard because that way that I don't have to do the mix first. The mix will be done while I'm doing the Skinner blend. And then I placed the yellow on the side and I'm going to put the translucent for the yellow right here because the yellow will come on the top of the salt and paper shaker salt and pepper shaker and now we can do the skinner blend hi pauline And because you have the translucent, it shouldn't take that long to do the Skinner blend. I'm going to actually make it a little bit faster on the thin. So if you see that it doesn't want to mix and blend because of the lines, just remember, just do this a little bit. Just for one pass, then put it back where it belongs. See, now just put it back where it belongs. Don't go overlapping it again. Okay, now I got it too wide. I'm going to have to make it narrow again and i showed this in the in my skinner how to make a skinner blend tutorial if because as you keep passing it through the pasta machine it just keeps getting wider and wider of course you can hold your uh, fingers on both sides of the strip and that way it will make it unable to go wider but because of how my uh, pasta machine is set it's practically impossible for me to do that without hurting. So I just bring them back together like this when they get too wide. And then you can uh, use your roller or you can just first use your fingers to do this. And only after that, use your roller to make it thin enough to go through the pasta machine. see how much longer it is now and I have again the line that I'm not happy about so I'll bring it just a bit like this and now I will let it go wide enough that it needs to be to cover the shaker because by the time it gets that wide it will be perfectly blend blended <laughs> oh yeah don't forget the thumbs up and see how i'm getting a very nice and subdued uh gradient
and I think I am right there. Let me see. Yes. You need to cover the shaker up to where the lid comes in. And uh, I am sorry, you probably can see, I'm sorry I didn't post so many tutorials lately, this week that means, but uh, if you see on my wrist here, uh, this past Monday I went and I got some uh, shots. Bonjour Delphine. Uh, I had some shots uh, done in my uh, wrist at the base of the thumb and they didn't work too good and also when they manipulated my other hand to check on it my hands has, have been killing me uh, so that's the reason why I didn't post so many tutorials because I have to stop whatever I'm doing very often so I can put splints on and go around not being able to do anything around the house. <laughs> but uh, hopefully all this will make things better, but it's going to take a little bit. Um, let me say that in French too. J'ai dit que je m'excuse pour n'avoir pas posté uh, tellement de tutos uh, dans le, la dernière semaine ou plus. C'est parce que mes mains euh, ont été très euh, mauvaises avec moi. Euh, enfin, lundi, j'ai eu des injections dans, le, dans la main, dans la main gauche, et aussi euh, une consultation qui euh, ils ont pris mes mains. Ils, ils ont... Oui, depuis, mes mains sont très, très douloureuses et je dois m'arrêter de temps en temps et mettre des, je ne sais pas comment ça s'appelle en français, Cécile, peut-être que tu peux m'aider. Mais enfin, j'espère que ça sera mieux dans quelques jours. C'est aussi c'est mieux qu'il a été quelques jours. Uh, so I think that it's going to get much better in a few days. It's way better than it was until like Wednesday. So we got this. The thing is, whenever you put stuff on glass, uh, obviously that's why we bake on glass because the polymer clay comes off right away. Normally on this, you shouldn't worry because see how it has to come like this so it didn't have room to slip away. Uh, so in any uh, case, I am going to use a little bit of uh, bacon bond. If you don't have bacon bond, you can use the simple play uh, a liquid clay. <clears throat> Et je dis que normalement, euh, quand on met du, de la pâte polymère sur la, la verre, c'est pour ça qu'on la cuit sur la verre, parce que euh, ça n'adhère pas. Euh, D'habitude, on doit mettre quelque sorte de colle, mais en ce cas, on n'a pas besoin de beaucoup, parce que la forme de la salière est comme ça, donc euh, la pâte ne pourrait pas euh, se séparer. Euh, je vais utiliser du bacon bond. Si vous n'avez pas du bacon bond, vous pouvez utiliser de, euh, de la pâte liquide. <rire> Rizarthrose, qu'est-ce que c'est ça la Rizarthrose? So, uh, try and get this around the shaker and it's better to, at this point, to remove the lid because you can see we'll have to come all the way up to here under this lip so let's first get some of this on and spread it really good if you prefer to work with the paintbrush go ahead and use a paintbrush you know me i like to get my hands dirty Ah oui, ça c'est pour, le, pour les vieilles femmes. Non. Euh, 
Ah oui, il, il paraît que j'ai euh, un petit bout d'eau qui s'est séparé ici et il flotte là-dedans. So it also seems that I had a, on the right hand that I had a small bone spur that was formed, but that bone spur at one point broke. So it's just floating in there somewhere. And that's from here to there. That's why it makes my right hand more painful than the left hand. So, okay. So let's do this. First of all, don't drop the clay like I did. First of all, um, first of all, you need to cut the clay before you put the, <laughs> the stuff on the bottle. So you can manipulate the bottle. Yay, I could do it with one hand. <laughs> oh, he's so sexy. No. Place the clay with the line of the yellow right under the lip. I got some little crumb here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So place it right under the lip here. As length. Of course, you can trim it later, but uh, that would give you an idea about where the line of the gradient will come all around the shaker so you can do the gradient kind of equally oh come on And of course, pay attention to air bubbles at this point before you start getting it together. Push the air bubbles out. And the same when you start bringing it in on top here, make sure you don't trap any air bubbles. Don't worry about this, we'll take care of it here in a minute. We'll just roll it out. And put some crap on the clay too because we don't check our roller. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was working for a uh, I was doing a tutorial for YouTube and I did one of those uh, easy cuffs bracelet bracelets and you know how uh, I showed you before how to do it very easily the problem is that uh, when you do with the roller on the edge the um, there are little strips that stick to the roller as they get detached from the 
um, bracelet cuff. And why I did this, I didn't cut this. I will show you in a minute because uh, there will be an area where you need to poke some holes. And I prefer that area to be a little bit thicker because otherwise the clay will separate. And you don't usually, uh, normally you only get some clay that's on the thinnest setting to do this because if it's too thick, especially on a small things like this, pourquoi? Qu'est-ce que c'est d'original avec mon rouleau? C'est trop mince pour ce que tu penses. Okay, and I'm going to get my little mini roller to the rescue. As you will want to do this very, very uh, clearly flat because you don't want your little shaker to start toppling on the table. And yes, we shall cover the thing in the middle in a minute here. Because remember, there are some Yeah, it's supposed to give you that warm feeling of uh, fall. What's called here Indian summer. Bizuroxan. Okay. Yeah, it happens that sometimes here too, when it's also, you know, we say that here in Oklahoma, we can actually experience all four seasons in one day. You know, I mean, you can have a cold morning, freezing temperatures, and by noon we get or close to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And then again, it starts getting freezing in the afternoon. I had my uh, honeysuckle.
Bon. Et je vais essayer de le... C'est quand le, le 8? Mon, ma cervelle est trop fatiguée à ce moment. Quelle heure est-il maintenant là-bas? Oui, c'est fatigant. And by the way, I'm going to remind you that there's less than a week left in the uh, 2500 subscribers contest. And that for that contest, the prize is you becoming a part of my secret group on Facebook, where all my sponsors are and where there are all these awesome tutorials special tutorials and i can uh, tell you honestly some of them i'll probably not put out even for um, uh, paid to see some of them will be just for my sponsors only and it's not only that but uh, i mean you can ask cecile and uh, Delphine and uh, Shirley, and there's quite a few of my sponsors here uh, right now. I post also a whole bunch of uh, tips and advice and uh, what I'm working on. So just for you to know what the whole prize is about. Okay, and I'm here a little. So there's less than a week left in the contest if you want to put in your entry. I won't have another prize contest until uh, 5,000 subscribers. And I'm kind of trying to put some stuff together for that one. So the prizes will be a little bit more than they were last time and also I'll try to do a better job because last time I kind of messed up and I sent the prize first prize to the second prize and the second prize to the first prize so yeah that was that <laughs> but I'm getting ditzy like that a lot of times je t'en prie uh, j'ai dit que y a uh, moins d'une semaine que le, le concours va être pour uh, un prix et le prix est de devenir uh, un de mes, des membres de mon uh, groupe pour les sponsors en uh, Facebook. Et je suis toujours heureuse de, de voir ce que vous faites. Donc, envoyez-moi des photos tout le temps sur ma page Facebook. I'm always happy to see what you're working and what you're doing with the, the stuff that I'm showing in my tutorial. So feel free at any time to send me photos on my Facebook page and I will feature them on the page. Also, I managed to get the um, um, website up and I'm starting to populate it. Right now, I've been populating a whole bunch of uh, uh, things for beginners. And I keep doing every day, adding more stuff. Next will be me uh, focusing on the, um, what you call it? Installing the store, too. Okay, so we got this, which is already quite pretty, isn't it? Now let's start and embellish it a little bit. Usually on these ones, you don't want to put add-ons, so to speak, because when you grab them and there's stuff on it, it doesn't feel good to the hand. And also, a lot of times, uh, people use this where, when their hands are 
kind of greasy and with all kinds of stuff from the table. So uh, if you put a lot of delicate ornaments, it's going to make it pretty hard to clean. So what you want to do is better to, you can add some texture, add some uh, color. So you just go to my Facebook page and then you go on message and you just attach a photo to the message and it will come to me. So, uh, did everybody get the sandpaper or not? Because if you did not get the sandpaper, then we can do it differently. Because we'll add a little bit of texturizing here. What, what? Really? Oh my goodness. Seriously? Seamus wants a little bit of attention. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. He always needs reassurance that his mama is still loving him. The little fatso. Yeah. Let me try and see if I can get him for you. Oh, he's leaving. Never mind. He decided he had enough love. Let me make sure that I got the camera back normal yeah from time to time he comes to tell me something and ask to be petted okay <laughs> that's cute Okay, so let's try and do some texturizing a little bit differently. Uh, if you have a, a low grit sandpaper, you can just pat with it this area, but try and pat only this area, not much down here. Donc, si vous avez un papier à verre qui est avec un grand grit, um, allez uh, appliquer le très très uh, doucement dans cette région, pas vers le bas, seulement dans cette région. But if you don't, we are going to just get a uh, something, you know, not a needle. If you have something like this, if not just a plain pencil that's fairly sharp, would work. Si vous n'avez pas de papier à verre, on va le faire avec ça. Non, 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 Delphine, ça c'est ça c'est le groupe. Moi, je parlais de la page. C'est sur la page que tout le concours va et tout ça. Non, pour le groupe, c'est seulement pour les pour les sponsors, c'est tout. Mais non, et pour le concours, tu dois faire quelque chose euh, euh, qui est fait avec un des tutoriels. Mais je poste n'importe quelle photo de mes, de mes fans pour montrer leur, euh, ce qu'ils qu ont fait. So, check again very well for air bubbles. And if there are any anywhere, make sure you pop them. <laughs> Because it's very easy to get air bubbles when you put a thin clay on an irregularly shaped glass vessel. So after you do that, make sure that you're popping those air bubbles. 
But um, talking about the <laughs> Delphine says that uh, every time she sees my roller, this roller, she starts laughing because of the shape. But I'm going to tell you something, and I actually recommend it. I wrote an article on my website. Um, everybody wants this, right? This roller. Now, there are several brands out there on the market. And uh, if you get the Scalpy brand, that's the worst choice that you can get. Uh, there's an Amico one, that's the one that you want to buy, uh, because the Scalpy one is very poor quality. Look what happened to mine. When I got it, it, it already had this spider web here. But then I dropped it one time on my uh, glass and it got chipped. And so this, this is how I got it when I took it out of the package. But on the other hand, this one, uh, this is from a oh, tree bottle brand. And I got it at Hobby Lobby, I think. This one is exceptionally sturdy. It's not as wide and it doesn't have this end that normally is very useful for whenever you want to press on uh, textures and stamps but i prefer to use this one for my regular work and also it's not as heavy as the other one and it's easier on my hand uh uh i think delphine est amusée par mon roller parce qu'il il a cette forme, mais euh, le problème est euh, tout le monde veut acheter euh, ce large one, mais il y a deux, au moins dans les États-Unis, il y a deux euh, grandes euh, compagnies qui, qui le font. Et moi, j'ai fait l'erreur d'acheter euh, l'un qui est fait par euh, Sculpé. Et celui-là, il avait comme l'araignée la, la, ici. Quand je l'ai pris du, du paquet, c'était pas, euh, j'ai rien fait pour faire ça. Et ensuite, je l'ai euh, laissé tomber une fois et il a craqué ici. Donc, il euh, y a un qui est beaucoup meilleur, qui est fait par le Amaco. Et celui-là est bon. Je Peut-être je vais m'acheter un euh, de l'Amaco. Mais celui-ci est très très bon et pas seulement pour ça mais l'autre il est plus grand et plus lourd donc celui-ci est beaucoup mieux pour mes mains le seul problème est qu'on le trouve seulement dans cette couleur so, je sais pas pourquoi so the only thing is that you can only find it in this color i have no idea why but you know Anyway, so let's go ahead and start texturing our thing. We will put a little bit of uh, applique here, but just on one side because that's where we are going to poke some holes. Whenever you cover a salt and pepper thing, you want to have some, uh, number one, it has to be uh, glass. Don't go for ceramic because it's different. Bonsoir, Lilou. Uh, but you want to poke some holes because you don't want to have to unscrew the lid to look inside to see if there's it needs to be refilled or not. So here I'm going to apply something more because I told you that's why I want it to be a little bit thicker here. So the clay won't start uh, getting broken when you cut the, the holes. So let's just do a little bit of texturizing on the upper part so do very gently don't poke hard that's why i'm going so so delicate that the the tool shifts in my hand and goes on the side <laughs> oh yeah that too So insist a little bit more on top. 
to have more of these pokey holes here. So if you use the sandpaper, apply it twice right at the top and then just once lower. And let's come just a little bit down. Okay, so this will be one. For this one, we will use, uh, you can use a mica powder if you want, but I will use just a plain uh, pastel color. And then, of course, I will need the tape. Hello, Carmen. What you doing? Really? Oh, my goodness gracious. Hello, baby. Yes, you're both before. They are both here now. Okay, so I'm going to get some uh, brown. And again, you can use uh, mica powder if you want. But I think it looks better with just a darker color. I'm going to just gently scrape some directly on the clay. Ah, merci, coquette. Ah, bonjour, je ne t'ai pas vu encore. Mais oui, je crois que tu as raison. Il y a des lives que je ne regarde plus parce qu'elles sont plutôt... Oh, Regardez-moi, je sais faire toutes ces choses, je suis si populaire. J'ai pas le temps pour ça, mais ne me comprenez pas mal. J'aime être dans un groupe et socialiser tout ça, mais c'est pas pourquoi je fais mes lives. And I know it looks nasty right now, but we shall remove this. And actually, we need a little bit more where the other little. Chalk pastel. And you can use no matter what kind. As I said a long time ago, these pastels I have, they are just some, they don't even make them anymore. I found them at Goodwill and I paid 75 cents for the box. So they are this brand and they don't really make them anymore. I was not able to find them. But you can use no matter what kind. I know it looks so ugly, doesn't it? Okay, time to remove the ugly. Je sais, je sais, vous vous dites, qu'est-ce qu'elle a fait, c'était si beau, et elle a fait si... C'est pas joli maintenant. On va le faire joli de nouveau. So now we are going to get some tape, and we are going to remove everything that's extra. So only the one that's in the... 
a little pokey holes we've put in will be left. Actually, at this point, it's better to have some packing tape, but mine, the one that I had on the support, I ran out of, and it's a pain to try and get the other one off the roll. Actually, I might have to try that or even some masking tape, but this takes forever. <laughs> Merci, Cecile. Okay, let me go get the bigger roll. This is ridiculous. Yes, I know. You're fine. I promise you. Okay, I got the masking tape. Trying to see where my big roll is because I don't see it. I know I sh prepared something for shipping with it. Oh, we. Yes, Connor is speaking all the time. He's a great talker. He always has something to talk about. Seamus only speaks when he thinks he's not loved enough, but Connor speaks all the time. These notifications of you need to upgrade this and you need to update this and you need to drive me nuts. Oh, come on. What did I do with my big tape? I bought, a, to honestly, I bought a new tape with support, but I'm still trying to remember what I did with it. Because I cannot even remember taking it out of the bag. I know I had it in the bag. But you know how it is when you buy stuff and you put it away and you don't know where. Yes, Connor is a spoiled brat. That's what Connor is. is way more spoiled than the other two together. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you watched, if you read my uh, 
blog entry today. I got really saddened this morning. There's this uh, artist who's not that I know of. I don't think she's a big name or anything, but um, she only has like two something subscribers and she's not a frequent poster, but I absolutely love her art. Uh, she does a lot of um, ancient-looking stuff, you know, and a lot with, like, ancient-looking goddess pendants and beads, and they really look ancient. And uh, her house burned down, and she lost everything. And she had made some awesome molds she was using for her beads and all that, and everything is gone. She was showing a pendant she was like this is the only thing that i have left and i have left it just because i was wearing it you know i suggested her uh delphine pour aujourd'hui en effet j'ai oublié de mettre le le petit uh, gage Mais d'habitude, mes, mes blogs euh, have le Google euh, traducteur qui, c'est pas parfait, mais peut te donner une idée de ce que je parle. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Hi, Debra. I uh, suggested, I posted and suggested to her to maybe uh, establish a GoFundMe or an Amazon wish list or because I am sure that there would be people who would like to, to help her. And, you know, honestly, a few dollars from here and a few dollars from there can add up and can help more than you believe. Oui, Delphine, c'est une euh, c'est une artiste qui n'est pas très connue, mais j'aime beaucoup euh, son art parce qu'elle fait beaucoup de de perles et de pendentifs qui sont en euh, en façon ancienne comme les les anciens statues de la déesse du néolithique en Europe. Et j'aime beaucoup son art. Et j'ai vu ce matin la poster une vidéo et là c'est que sa maison a brûlé, elle a perdu tout. Tout ces mots, tout ces outils, tout ces. I mean, c'est bon que personne n'a été blessé ou tué, mais quand même, c'est terrible. I'm almost done. Almost. Now we can go a little bit deeper with this. But yeah, the idea with the chalk pastel, dark chalk pastel, is to make it look, uh, you know, like the leaves when they start getting uh, wilted and turning color. But you don't want a lot of it. You only want a few uh, points. Uh. Terracotta pots or what? I have some. What for?
Yeah, go ahead. Idea to do what? Sure. You can message me. It's the best to message me on Facebook because the YouTube doesn't give you a lot of uh, options when you message. You cannot message photos. You cannot message links. So yeah, and I'm not sure if I have terracotta pots that would be small enough to get in the oven, but I'm sure that I can find some stuff around at the strip stores or... Uh, no, Cecil, terracotta is terquit, it's the argile that has the color of terracotta, but... Qu'on fait des des pots pour les pour le jardin pour mettre les fleurs pour planter les fleurs on fait des le comment ça the roof roof tiles mais les les pots pour les fleurs ça c'est le plus connu Oh yeah, Dollar Tree usually has a little terracotta stuff. Okay, this took a longer time than I was hoping it would. Just because it's my fault because I didn't get the thing ready. Anyway, so it's supposed to look kind of like this. See, it gives it a little bit of a stone texture and feel. And then on the bottom part, um, you can use, uh, if you have a, a leaf stamp, that would be the best. But you don't want it to be very, very deep. Okay, I'll look when I'm uh, when I'm done with the broadcast. Just a second, I'll be right there. I'm looking for something. I have my uh, my leaf things. I rearranged my whole craft room, and I still need to get used to how things are set now. I have the tendency to go to the way they used to be. So whatever you have in terms of uh, flowers or uh, yeah, that's the idea. The oak and maple leaves are the more colorful in uh, fall. So I got this stamp at Hobby Lobby for like a little bit over two dollars. It was on clearance, so I was really good about it. And it has these little flowers and butterfly things. So I'm going to use this.
but if you have other you know like leaf looking little flower things go ahead and use those Get a little butterfly to come right here. I know you cannot really see anything right now, but you'll see it in a little bit. They're just so tiny, it's so easy to lose them. Where's my butterfly? I lost the butterfly. This is not the butterfly. Okay, and now for the next step, I'm going to use alcohol ink, but you can use uh, washed off acrylic paint just as well. You, it, you'll just have to wait a little bit longer for it to dry than uh, you have to for alcohol ink. Sorry, I have to put these back right now because though you saw how tiny those ones are and they are transparent. So they are so easy to lose. I wasted one time almost two hours when I dropped one on the carpet. So, I'm going to use some uh, green and some red. And of course, I'm going to put something underneath. And we should be good to finish all this by 1.30 so I can show you the finished product. Because... Uh, at this thickness it can bake for like 15 minutes and after i show it to you and after i put some finish on it it can go back in the oven so it will be just fine I know it doesn't look like something very beautiful, but believe me, it will be once it gets all baked. And we will do just a very slight sanding on it as well. So drop the drops only where you have the stamps. Yeah, especially these ones that are uh, translucent are such a pain. And 
they are hard to wash. I normally put them in a bowl with uh, a little bit of soapy water and then I use a colander. I have a big colander and that's what I use to rinse them. So you see, I am uh, kind of diluting the, the ink that's in between the stamped areas. Done with the green, and now just a pinch of red. Uh, you can do this with uh, green, with red, with even with black. But the best on the orange is to use green and red if you have, because of the way they uh, combine. Oui, quelque chose comme ça. So after you apply a drop, use the the spray to dilute it a little bit so then you can kind of wash it off and make it just do a gradient and then there will be one more effect after it's baked that show you to get the full potential of this more green on a few of these stamps.
Okay. Now we'll wait a few minutes for it to dry properly. Then make the poke holes. Then it goes for baking. Let me get my poke holes. Okay, and I'll get the biggest of my poke holes and go on the side that has the thickest um, clay. And you see it's got here some lines and I actually like the effect that it does. That's why I didn't uh, completely smooth it out because you see how it gives more of a stonish appearance. So get if you have a camper cutter, I don't have camper cutters and the camper cutters are even better because they are a little bit bigger than this, but uh, I don't have anything in between a regular cutter and this. So I'm just going to use my TBT cutters to do this. So make sure that you don't poke where you already have a stamp. And I'm going to do another size. And remove these. If you want to poke holes on all sides, go ahead and do so. I usually like to have holes only on one. And we are good to go. So I'll go, I'm going to put this in the oven for 15 minutes and I'll be right back and we'll shall chat while this is baking. Hello. Yes, I know you have a comfy fuzzy belly. Okay. Ah oui, on va penser un petit pour euh, faire tout ce, ce stampage, ce tamponnage. Uh, this is the piece for the tutorial that's going to be uploaded today. I still have to do some editing on it. But this is with one of the um, pieces I made when I did the hidden magic part of the Mokumegane and then I made a cane using the pretty much the same colors that were in the hidden magic but I also added a little bit of bronze just to give an extra interest and I also use the same hidden magic. It's not the same one that's on the front. And in the tutorial, I show you how you can modify 
the um, the pieces because I started with two pieces that were like this. So I had to manipulate them uh, to become for the back to become wider, but for the front to become narrower and longer. And uh, making the cane will be a bonus at the end of the tutorial. And also, somebody asked uh, some questions about the the easy cuffs uh, on that easy cuffs reviews I review I did. So that's why I thought it would be a good idea to um, show one more time how to do an easy cuffs with three layers this time because the person was asking what thickness I use for the the bracelet and I said the ideal is to go I mean the three millimeters would be the lowest you can go uh, and about five would be the thickest because after five it loses the flexibility um, and below three it's too squishy <laughs> I don't know how to describe it otherwise um, so that's why I decided to do one in three layers to show exactly how it goes when you do three layers. And this is just with a, a magnet clasp and with a double a ring, and I show how to make the double ring as well. Um, I will do some more cuffs. I know everybody likes cuffs, but I will probably start, if my hands get much better by uh, next week, I will uh, start also uh, in October making um, things that can be used for, you know, either to make gifts or in your store to sell for the holidays. Because I was thinking there's a, a way to make a little pendant box and if you make it about just a pinch larger than the size of a credit card um, you can um, you can make a little pendant that you can go with like your credit card and your driving license and maybe some cash as a pendant and nobody will be the wiser knowing that you have that and there's a very easy way to making sure that it closes properly uh, actually that one can be used by a male too and i will make several variants of it um just to show how it can be done for um, a woman for a man uh, and for, uh, you know, not really a child, but for more of a teen teenager, uh, because um, it depends a lot. Let me put it this way. The, the box is about like this, okay? And uh, you can make it look like it's made out of hammered silver with some uh, turquoise and coral hammered in it. So if you put it, if you don't put it on a chain, but you put it on a leather uh, cord and you don't start adding all kinds of beads, it will look fine on a guy. And also certain types of bracelets look fine on guys. Guys nowadays don't really use a lot of uh, rings, but some of them will uh, wear uh, pendants and will wear uh, cuffs. What's an incy bead? What kind of paint did you try? Okay, it can happen, no worries. You should see me when I start dropping stuff. That's a... Okay, you guys want to see something? Let me try and see if I can. Oh, come on. There you go. Remember in the video about him, 
I say how he's laying around the house with his fuzzy belly up. Yeah, that's how he's all over the place. Connor, Connor, what you doing there? What you doing? Uh, hello, yes, yes, yes. He's always worried that I love Connor more than I love him. Yes. Yes, yes, I love you too. I know. Oh yeah, he is always on his back, hoping that somebody maybe will stop and start petting his fuzzy belly. Okay, this way I'm trying to fix this back. But yeah, yes, I have a whole bunch of stuff. I actually started looking at the thrift store for a little shelf-like thing to put some stuff right here so I don't have to get up all the time and uh, get things, you know, like most of the, like the acrylic paints and the cutters and uh, the mica powders. It would be nice if I could have them right here so I don't have to get up all the time. So yeah, this one, I'm glad you like it. And all it has, the, the bronze here, it's actually acrylic paint. There's a little bit of bronze in the, let me see if I can make this. So you can see the cane. But you see, I used exactly the same colors oops as the ones in the hidden magic mokumegane except for the little bit of bronze in the middle and i will make at one point uh, some tutorials on uh, um how to make canes as I said, right now I only populated pretty much the beginner area and I'll focus on that a little bit if you guys don't mind because I think that there's some stuff that needs to be um, uh, there. I know that a lot of times people who just begin complain that they cannot find enough information and uh, especially when it comes to simple things, you know, and I am trying to put together a list that would help somebody who's just beginning, and especially somebody who's just beginning and doesn't have a whole bunch of money, you know, to tell them uh, how they can start, what they can use as a tool until they manage to uh, budget and get the, the tool that is specific for uh, polymer clay, because as I said it before, and I'll say it again, when I went back on uh, scouting, I did not have any anything. I went and I got three two-ounce packages of polymer clay from the store, and then I had a needle, a toothpick, a, and a cuticle cutter. And that's what I used for my first little sculptures. But the, in the beginning, I was, uh, as I said before, I used to be a, mostly a dolls and figurine sculptor. I wasn't so much into the whole uh, jewelry making. But I made a few figurines, then I sold them, and I got the money needed to get me more tools. So I practically started with under $10. And slowly, slowly, I got more. And uh, I sold stuff and I reinvested the money in tools and in polymer clay and in all that. But um, as I said again, I was not into the jewelry, so I did not invest a lot in texture sheets. And I mean, my investment was mostly in stuff needed to make fairy wings in uh, stuff needed to make doll hair, 
you know, not in texture sheets and mica powders. And I, I did have a whole bunch of acrylic paints. I mean, I think I have over 200 um, bottles of acrylic paints. And I got the watercolors and because I, I also used to do a lot of painting. But that's why when I started again and I decided to go on the jewelry way, and again, it doesn't mean, in Romania I was doing quite a bit of jewelry. But here I did not. Um, and I knew the techniques, I knew all that, so I thought it would be really easy. And then I don't have to cry because uh, with my hands being the way they are, as I said, as if I was working on a fairy sculpture, let's say, for three days, and then my hand would twitch and I would either drop it or throw it, involuntarily, of course, all my work for three days would be messed up. But if I do jewelry, I might mess up a bead that can be redone easily, but it's not the work of three days, you know. No, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I posted one time in my blog, I was making a piece of jewelry and I was like, oh, I want this effect on this Mokumegane. What can I do? And then I decided and I thought that it came up really good. I used the meat beater on the largest things. Oh, my God. And it did not just a Mokumegane beautiful, but I was able to get an applique uh, slice that was gorgeous. Absolutely, absolutely, Cecile. And, and that's, that's another reason why a lot of times in my tutorials I don't use a lot of textures and stamps and fancy tools because uh, not everybody who's watching has them. And I know how frustrating it is, you know, to see a, a tutorial and then see the, the artist, look, I did, uh, start playing with all kinds of textures and showing them and it can be so frustrating, you know, it doesn't, I don't think it really encourages someone to, to create something. But when people see that they can do beautiful stuff with a minimal uh, investment and with things that they don't have to go broke to buy, I think it's way, um, way better and it helps people more uh, want to work and to create. I know, Tina, right? Okay, the oven has dinged, so let me go get that out of the oven so it would get cooler faster. Okay. I got the totally fast because I would have shown you how to do it by hand, but I'm sorry my hands are hurting, so I'm going to use the totally fast. And besides, it's not a lot of sanding that needs to be done. Uh, as a piece of advice, never put um uh, stuff that's on glass in cold water because it's going to um, crack 
I mean, has the potential to crack. So let it cool off a little bit, and then you can put it in water. But if you're trying to make something uh, cool off faster, do not throw it in the water. And you can see how the colors with the, the red and the green, how they changed on the um, on that orange. Let me bring it a little bit closer so you can see better. And then once it's going to be, the surface will be sanded a little bit. And then once you put a, some varnish on it, sorry, this is my uh, oven rag. Uh, once you put some varnish on it, it will look absolutely fabulous. So we'll wait a few minutes so I can start sanding. I can actually hold it like this and start on it if I think about it. Because I can hold it with the rag. Okay, let me try and get this a little closer so you can see better. Okay, this is better. But yeah, you can do this by hand, and it's actually easier and less fast to do it by hand. But as I said, my hands are really messing up, so. I might need the lower grit for this. Just a minute, I need the lower grit. So you need to start with the lower grit so you can remove easier the top layers of clay. I guess I'm actually going to start with the 150. Okay, and then get this down so I can see the chat. Yeah, this is a very nice uh, uh, technique to make stuff, especially look like stonish. And you can do this on various colors with various effects. And as I said, you don't have to use uh, 
what you might call it, alcohol inks. It works the same with acrylic washed off acrylic paint. I think I should have changed the head too, but Oh yeah, I, I looked for them. I know I have some real leaves stamps somewhere here. Actually, I need to make some more before all the leaves fall. If you look in the list of my tutorials, you will find one that shows how to, how to cover a light switch. And in that, I show how to make uh, stamps using real leaves. and how to make realistic looking leaves. I think that that's the name of the tutorial, how to make realistic looking leaves. And then uh, using the same stamps, I uh, covered the light switch, but this time I did it with the copper patina effect. And again, I did not even use leaf stamps. I used those little flower things. But believe me, to be honest, it doesn't really matter what you put because uh, it will still give a nice effect just by the difference in texture. And then when you put the acrylic paint or the, the alcohol ink, it will just get into the crevices and then when you sandpaper it it will make a beautiful effect doesn't really matter what kind of stamp you're using and then go a little bit over the yellow too to remove any leftover chalk pastel that you could not remove with the tape. Because it's not that deep embedded. I should have gotten the hard head, not this one. No, it's cool enough to Okay, let me go back out. It's cool enough to put in the Of course, I'm going to have to get it under the kitchen sink. And if your uh, alcoholing did not go enough in the stamps, you can apply some more even if the polymer clay is baked. And then just do the same thing, stand a little bit. Okay. 
but as a general idea this is how it looks like and I'll get it in a close-up so you can see better with the card stone effect and all that chalk pastel and it's not fully clean of course and I will uh, pass some finer sandpaper over it before varnishing it and you can use whatever varnish you want you can use regular floor polish varathane min wax liquid polyclay you can leave it like this if you want you don't have to varnish it so this is how a way to do it and you can do this in a lot of variants you don't have to uh, do it with uh, the whole yellow and orange I did it just because it was the whole it's a whole faux thing but you can do it just like a stone faux stone and then you will just uh, mix some uh, white with beige and with a little bit of gray make and place the Skinner blend differently you know what maybe I will do one tutorial about how to make false stone on uh, covering a, a glass something with false stone because maybe you would like to to see that yeah and see you can see here if it needs refills or not and there you go this is one way I know it's not with a lot of embellishments you can do so many things to embellish but I wanted to show you this four stone look and I will once I finish varnishing it and I probably will uh, go in with a little bit more ink here to enhance more the whole stampy look uh, I will post a photo on my Facebook page so you can uh, see how it looks like when it's fully finished. And I hope you had fun. J'espère que vous avez aimé. Donc, je vais mettre un peu plus d'alcohol uh, de, de, de ces... Uh, oh, God. J'ai oublié encore. De, de ces encres. Um, mais vous pouvez aussi utiliser de, de l'acrylique. Uh, qui sait pas avec beaucoup de, de l'eau dedans um, et je crois que je vais mettre un peu plus ici sur les tampons que j'ai mis pour uh, montrer la, le dessin uh, mieux et ensuite poncer un peu plus et uh, donc vous pouvez appliquer du vernis si vous voulez uh, mais c'est seulement à vous moi je crois Je ne sais pas encore si je vais appliquer du vernis parce que je, moi j'aime beaucoup cette euh, pierre, euh, faux pierre euh, aspect. So, thank you so much for being here with me. And I don't know what we're going to do next Sunday. I'll have to think about something, but it will also be related to fall and stuff. Uh, starting October. October, the second uh, part of October, we'll start doing stuff for the holidays. Okay, you too, and thank you for being here with me. Merci pour être ici avec moi, and pour tous une bonne dimanche. Au revoir. Goodbye, everybody.